find out who you are and then you find out who you want to be. Today my life is amazing. I made my home there, I got my life back there. That's the energy that, that the house has. You think you need to change, this is obviously like the best place to be for that. I wanted to get some help because I was done with using and I didn't like my life. I was on the streets, sleeping in stairwells, sleeping on park benches, doing a lot of crime, organized crime, like um, <laughs> pretty much doing anything to survive, right, and to get my dope. My son, his name is Greg, and one year ago, almost today, he went into a deep drug-induced psychosis. Uh, a drug-induced psychosis can mean a lot of different things, but if they don't get help within two or three months, they, that can create mental illness. And so when my family discovered that he was in this drug-induced psychosis, we needed to act pretty quick. I pretty much lost myself and everything around me. You know, I, I lost faith in myself. I stopped going to school. I started treating myself and others like crap. I started misusing my family. I started treating my family like crap. Started being very violent with everyone. And little by little, I lost friends and family and things just went bad. Like it came to the point in my life where I just needed to do it, like I knew I needed to do it. It wasn't that I, I just didn't want to use drugs anymore, I needed to change, right? He's like most kids, he's a good kid. And for whatever reason, he lost it, it got out of hand. He chose to let it get out of hand. And so it was shocking, yes. Yeah, I just, uh went to the last door in the recovery center, the youth door, and uh, yeah, I cleaned up there and on my one-year cake, my dad came in and then my brother came. I think I caught it pretty early, like my, my problem, but um, you know, it could have got so much worse and I could still be out there, you know, like just screwing everything up. All I could picture was like going to the hospital, bar windows, like serving food on on plastic plates like in a hospital and sleeping in hospital beds. That's what I pictured treatment as being like a boot camp, like push-ups and stories and crying and all that stuff. It's not like you're gonna feel the pain of using, you're gonna, we're gonna go through all these feelings and dig up why you started using drugs. We just focus on being clean, having fun and getting a life out of the deal. Our philosophy is that uh, if you're not enjoying it, you're not doing it right. You know, that recovery, yeah, there's some painful things and there's some things that you have to deal with that, that may be sad and, may, you know, it might really, you know, be difficult. But really, if you're going to stay clean and you're going to be in recovery long term, you have to look at some way to enjoy your life, some way to lighten up and, and you know, go with the flow. I mean, would you stay clean if you're white knuckling and holding on to your chair and every day is a struggle? Like, I wouldn't. You do uh, a lot of your own stuff. It's a reintegration program. It's all, uh, it's all about making friends, having fun, eating well. Our major focus is about the solution, um, about feeling good, about getting healthy. Um, we don't spend a lot of time in the problem. And uh, a lot of my guys have told me they really like that. The first thing that I noticed when I first got to treatment is that we ate so well there. Like, we didn't have hospital food. People come in here pretty small. I came in here about 140 pounds. I'm 185 pounds now. You want to gain your weight back pretty quick. All the guys in the house do chores. There's like a cooking chores. One guy in the house cooks at meals every day. There's some work. But everything's fine. Yes, it's not just like rehab, it's a recovery center. Like you get your life in gear here and you learn how to live your life when you get out of the house. It's not just getting clean off drugs. I know for me the most influential part of the Last Door program is being a part of a community. Being a part of something. Like when I was loaded, that's what I was looking for, was to be a part of a group of people and to feel like we're friends, right? And like, if you really think think back on it, I wouldn't trust the guy who I was sitting beside, not a chance. I've been in, a, in quite a few safe houses and it's like you fall asleep, you gotta watch your stuff, you know, people are trying to steal your stuff and you know there's no trust, right? When I came here it was just, I mean I remember a couple guys from the house, not even staff, a couple guys from the house came and picked me up and it was more of a brotherhood and uh, 
you know, they really, we really embraced unity and being together and, and taking care of one another. Like even after you've moved on and you've moved out of the house, right? Like they always encourage people to come back mm -hmm. and dinner's on the table and it's just, you know, like this is home, right? And uh, I'm never ever feeling comfortable here. I can always come back here and I know I'm, everything's going to be okay and food's going to be on the table, right? I always know that people are going to care about me, right? If I'm having a bad day, I can always rely on my friends to talk to me about it and they'll always be there to talk to me. Like sometimes I want to leave, sometimes, like it's not always a good day here, right? Sometimes you have bad days, but you can always like wait it out and I always look forward to coming and see my friends and spending time with them. It's a really cool thing to have people just like you in this program. So. A lot of them can deal with authority one way and deal with their peers another way. So in a peer-driven model like this, where the peers are accountable more to each other than they are to the authority figures, the real person starts to show through as well. And they do for each other what no system could ever do for them. There's leadership but it, and authority, but it's not um, institutional at all. Well, counseling's great. Counselors are like kids, you know, like most of them are pretty young. Most of them have all been through the program themselves, too, so it's not like talking to a psychiatrist. These are guys that have done it themselves and gotten clean here, and they know what it's like. You know, they have experience, and I really respect that. Like, there's not one thing I change about this place. You know, they, they don't have smoking here, everything, everyone's taking care of their own business, the food's good. I like that it's in the community. You don't feel like an alien because you're, you know, because you're an addict. You're not isolated from the world, you know, like, we're no different from anybody else. It's like, you know, you got that empty void. We turn to drugs to fill that void instead of relationships or, you know, or dealing with it in other ways. So, you know, now, like, we learn how to fill that void with more positive things instead of drugs. And it's just, you know, the door teaches you that. That's cool. Greg is becoming a man by taking responsibility for who he is, what he says, what he does. The door gave me that, gave me the ability to make friends and keep friends, and uh, the ability to spend time with my family and not fight. Just, just being, help me being clean and being honest, being open to different things. That's what the door's done for me. Like I just have a ride being clean, having good friends. I just bought a $20,000 truck and, you know, I'm planning on going to California with my best friend. We cleaned up together and, uh, you know, it just, people want me around now and it just, it feels good. It's a really easy way to get clean and start making a new life and it's just, I don't know, it's a big change for me and I, I really enjoy it. So.